Today is the Remembrance Day of Pearl Harbor, and on my heart this morning was a story from an experience that I had that I think connects to this um, a lot. So when I was probably in my 30s, I had just taken over directing the chancel choir at Damascus United Methodist Church, and things were going well. We were getting ready for some kind of a patriotic event, and I had scheduled for the choir to sing the Battle Hymn of the Republic, Glory, Glory, Hallelujah. Um, and so we were rehearsing, and this older gentleman who was in the choir um, got visibly angry, very, very angry, and started to interrupt the rehearsal with loud interjections about how we shouldn't be singing this song. And he was kind of like my grandfather's age, and I was like stunned. I didn't quite know what to do, but in that moment I said, you know, um, I need you to stop interrupting the rehearsal, but I will give you some time at the end of this practice um, to share your thoughts with us so that we can understand where you're coming from. But I said, could you please stop with the, you know, interruptions and the loud verbal whatever, because he was clearly very angry. And so he did, he calmed down and, um, Thankfully, at the end of the rehearsal, when he spoke, um, he shared a story with us that just to this day, I'm stunned by how this all played out. But he reflected that he um, had been one of the pilots that dropped the atom bomb on Hiroshima um, uh, at the end of World War II. Um, and so patriotic music for him is a real problem. A, a him exalting war for him was just the most horrible thing in the world. And in that moment, I understood, wow, so choices that I make about songs, you know, something that has a great meaning for someone might have a really terrible association and trigger of terrible memory for someone else. So that was a point of awareness. But what happened after that was really miraculous. And I can only only call it that. There was a wonderful woman uh, from Japan whose family uh, had been, uh, you know, nearby when that had happened, and she talked about the whole thing and how just she offered this tremendous word of um, forgiveness, and it was one of the most beautiful moments, and there was this sense of, oh, we can talk and we can engage. And there was this beautiful moment of sort of um, connection. That's the best word I can use. Uh, and it occurs to me on this Pearl Harbor day um, that, that maybe what was so troublesome about Pearl Harbor was that we perceived as a nation that we were caught with our defenses down, right? Came in and we weren't expecting and we were blindsided. Um, and as a people, we are wired to defend ourselves. That's part, we have this flight or fight or flight system that goes on in our individual bodies, but in the collective, we are wired to perceive threat and to defend ourselves. That's just the way we are. Um, and it's also amazing for me to think about that we perceive that we were threatened and so all of our creative energy, all of that creative energy that went into creating the atom bomb, which is an amazing feat, was, was motivated in a sense of fear. And so when we are in that fear mode, peace becomes really complicated. But I don't want to say that never should we have war because there's biblically there is a time for war and a time for peace. But I think when we get caught in one mode and can't switch back to the other, um, which was the real gift of what this woman gave to us um, in our choir situation, she sort of turned the tides. She said, come back here. Right, just with her voice and her calmness and forgiving allowed us all to enter a mode of peace for a moment. And so I feel like it's a flawed way of thinking to just say, can't we all just get along? Well, no, there's more at stake. And there are times when we are defending ourselves. Um, and and I feel like there are actually battles right here in my own town, in your own town, that happen. But when we stay in that mode of fighting, then we 
we are geared toward solving that problem and we we can't take stock of the things around us and we can't we can't be in that place of peace and there's a time for both there is a time for both and i've also been thinking what of the people like that dear man who shared his story at a rehearsal that we rely on to carry out those missions right what does that do and i may not be the one carrying it out so easy for me to say oh i'm at peace and i can sing this song and not have this association but what of those people who have who have uh, agreed and been forced to um, follow through with those sort of enacting of acts of war. So uh, just complicated issues for this day, but my sense is that while we do have battle hymns, we also have hymns of peace. And we have to sing them so that we can maybe go back and forth because staying in a place of fighting is not good for us. It's not good for our bodies. There are times when we have to do it, but it's not a place to stay. Um, and I think that's what the message of Advent is, is that um, Jesus is coming to, to show us the way back to peace. And maybe he will reign in um, an eternity of peace, but in the meantime, there can be moments when we glimpse it and when we experience it. I want to read um, the text from a poem by Thomas Traeger called The Dream Isaiah Saw, and to me, this is a hymn of peace. Lions and oxen will sleep in the hay. Leopards will join with the lambs as they play. Wolves will be pastured with cows in the glade. Blood will not darken the earth that God made. Little child whose bed is straw, take new lodgings in my heart. Bring the dream Isaiah saw, life redeemed from fang and claw. Peace will pervade more than forest and field. God will transfigure the violence concealed deep in the heart and in systems of gain, ripe for the judgment the Lord will ordain. Little child whose bed is straw, take new lodgings in my heart. Bring the dream Isaiah saw, justice purifying law. Nature reordered to match God's intent. Like your soul and mine, nature reordered. Nations obeying the call to repent. All of creation completely restored filled with the knowledge and love of the Lord. Little child whose bed is straw, take new lodgings in my heart. Bring the dream Isaiah saw, knowledge, wisdom, worship, all. And I just love that hymn. Uh, to peace. And peace is maybe our final destiny, but peace is possible right now.